Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where the Orchard of Wisdom shows are at your fingertips. It ignites your soul, your heart, your spirit, your mind, and your body with illumination from people who have made the journey before you. They're here now to help you on your journey, on your path of self-discovery. We are funded by you, the audience, and the people we interview. If you wish to support us, please go to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com and press on our Fund Action button. Anything is appreciated. We would like you to sit back and enjoy the shows. Here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living right here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. My wonderful repeat guest is Caprice Hawk. We interviewed ooh, way back quite a number of years ago. And it's about her art, beautiful art that she does. We're going to be talking about a lot more things today. She does have a challenge which does not get in her way. She has multiple cirrhosis. And in our last show, we really did talk about that journey. Uh, how it led her to her art and what her art means. And I do invite you to come back and listen to that. But art is something that is not only her healer, it's her expression, um, but it's also now something that she teaches. She's also branched out into Cloud Lake Literary, where she is uh, actually reviewing people's books and uh, you can submit a book and she'll do the whole review of it and, and lets it out she's also got into writing as well so most certainly this lady does not sit back and uh, do nothing she's very very immersed into life despite any challenges that she may have and that is the point of life isn't it caprice my love doesn't matter what our challenge is we find something that is meaningful for sure. And thank you for having me back. It is lovely to see you, Sarah. Yeah, it's great to see you. And it's been such a long time. We can't believe how many years have passed by, but there's been no still waters in your lake, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. What was the last, do you recall what year I think, it was? Yes, I can actually look that up right here because I've got it right here where, it, where, where I think it was 15. Wow. Um, I think it was way that's, back then. So that's a walk. Yeah. Seven years. Yeah. 15, yeah. I know. It's just like, where does the time go? Right. You look fabulous. <laughs> so do you. So do you. Art, <clears throat> you know, it's, we're all looking for a way to express ourselves. We're looking right. for something that is, there's a statement of how we see life, how we perceive life, how we wish to interact with life. And, you know, art is your, main focus and it's and you love landscapes and i've actually put up here in your show posting um four of your beautiful paintings which oh, you know just you. speak to me um what does art mean to you i cannot imagine my life without art mm. it's it, it came i didn't take art in school and I was majoring in psychology at the University of Lethbridge, and it wasn't speaking to me at all. And when I quit halfway through my degree, I stumbled upon the world of art way back when, and I cannot imagine life without that. It's just opened up a whole new world. I love looking at art, seeing art, painting art, teaching art. I just, yeah, it's it, my whole in life, my whole life encompasses art. So mm. It's it kind of, in a way, it's, it's a different form of psychology, isn't it? It is. It is. Yes. Yeah. It's just, uh, it becomes, you become engulfed in it for mm. sure. Yeah. Mm. You know, with, um, you know, I'm always saying to people, you know, um, our canvas in life, you know, have a blank canvas, be your own paintbrush and paint the life that you want. And, you know, it, life is, can be our choice now your multiple cirrhosis is not your choice it's something that you were given but it's certainly not held you back that's right it's actually it's a form of muscular dystrophy right which is similar to ms but mm -hmm. just slightly different but yeah i was diagnosed when i was two and a half years old so it's kind of all i've ever really known right yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it I doesn't hold you back. Yes, you know, you're, you're in a chair, you, you know, you have those obstacles. Um, but it's, um, you just learn to deal with things, don't you? You learn That's to, sure. you know, this is, this is the parcel that I was given, you can moan and groan about it. Or you can just go, okay, what is it here for me, for me to learn from? And what yeah. is it for me to teach others to learn from? That's right. Well, and I was very fortunate to have the mum mm. that I did. And when I was diagnosed when I was two, 
the, the intern at the hospital gave my mom this piece of advice that said, whatever you do, don't raise Caprice any different than you raised your other three. And I have three older siblings. And so she took that to heart and mm-hmm. just, you know, yeah, there are some things you can't do, but here you can do this. So yes. she, she raised me just the way she raised my two brothers and sister. And we were, you know, just moved on. It was just right. a part of, it was part of life, but only one part of it. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you just face the challenges. It's like if somebody was blind or short of hearing that you're just going to change the way you do things. But that doesn't mean life has to, you know, come to an end. You no. know, you just look to what you can do. You don't focus exactly. on the cons. You look to what you can do. Exactly. Yeah, it was just uh, I was so lucky growing up just to be able to do so many things. I was always busy, always, mm. you know, and then I that just continued on into my into my adult life, you know, I just never stop. So, I mean, you said that you came to art kind of when you were in college, but were you a doodler or a painter or a drawer when you were young? Well, I, I was, but not in painting. I mm. did not like to paint. My mom bought me paints when I was like 12 and I didn't have any interest in it whatsoever, but I was always very creative. And she taught me to be a custom seamstress. So I was very into clothes and fashion and all that sort of thing. So I made all my own everything all my own clothes I was always redesigning outfits and all of that sort of thing and then um it was just a I learned a great deal about color and line and shape yes. through all of my sewing so that was kind of my my prerequisite for my art so right people don't realize that how much that crosses over it truly does it truly does yeah it's yeah I, I was like always been creative since I was very young very young, but just in different aspects, for sure. Mm. You know, like art is a form of therapy. So, you know, there is the psychology of it. You know, the, the creative arts of designing clothes, you know, the, the lines, the design, being able to see shapes, etc. Yes. I mean, yes. you know, we, we, we know people say, but you changed your mind and you did this and you did that. And I said, yeah, but it's all a stepping stone to where you really it's are true. meant to be. It's true. And it all, you know, you learn from everything, all of your experiences, for sure. I think the key thing is to be willing to have the experiences, not let anything get in your way. It's true. It's true. Yeah. And even when I was majoring in psychology in school, that was all an experience. And I learned to be on my own and living in a different city from my family. And, you know, I am so grateful that I had those experiences Mm -hmm. And I often thought about going to school for my art. And then that never kind of happened. I majored with some three different uh, professional painters. And that became my education, Mm. which was Mm. a different route than I had anticipated. You know, so you have to be open to the experiences that come your way too. Yeah. I mean, just life isn't linear. You know, I'm going to do this and that's going to be the outcome. You know, there's always lots of twists and turns. And if you're not willing to kind of explore those avenues you know you may be missing out on where you're really meant to be it's true it's true yeah and you know I even went after I started painting I went to um the way they had in Calgary all of the art schools from North America had come and I went and I took my portfolio and I went to one of the schools and I showed them my work and he said, just go home and paint. You're already an artist. Uh, You don't need to go to school. And if you go to school, art school, it will completely change your mm -hmm. whole way you're working. You just need to focus on what you're doing. So sometimes you have to be open and not think you need to go in a certain direction because now I'm very grateful that I took the path that I did because Mm -hmm. You know, and art school is definitely for some people, but it just wasn't my way. And and I'm really you know, glad. You yeah, know? because you, you, the, the expression of your art is truly you, not a, you know, n- not a discipline. The, yes. Not to say there aren't disciplines in it, but it's not yes. somebody else's discipline. You know, we yes. see this all the time when we're watching talent shows and somebody will come out and sing, you know, do a performance. And yes, that was pitch perfect. That was this and that, but where's the feeling? Where's the connection? And then somebody comes out a little bit rougher, but that, you know, uh, not so perfect, but just touches your heart and your soul. And that's because it came from the heart and soul. And whatever avenue you choose to pursue in life, don't lose your reason why or the essence of you in, in pursuing it or in trying to perfect it because it then becomes 
the teacher's perception rather it's than true. your own. Yes. And I try to pass that on to my students as well. Now that I'm in teaching and I do, I teach the fine art rules. There's five rules, yes. composition, color, mix, value, all those things. And I teach that to my students. And of course they often will walk away with some paintings that look similar to mine, but then they find their way. Yeah. And I, it's just so exciting to see them, self, them expressing themselves. Yeah. In their own self-discovery, right? yes. which is yes. wonderful. Yes. And you know, the thing about art and artistry, whether you've chosen sing, dance or whatever performance, you know, uh, whatever you're choosing, it is an expression of your heart and soul. And it, it is, is what we want to see in there. We, you know, you can have 10 people look at the same picture and each and every one of them is going to describe it differently. It's true. And I've thought about some of the paintings that I've seen over the years in art galleries and museums and the ones that have touched me that you would never, I never would have imagined. There was one that I saw when I was in Rome and it was a Caravaggio painting. It was of Jesus Christ when the Romans came to take him away. And I burst into tears and I'm not a Catholic. Right. Yes. And it was so bizarre. And it was just so overwhelming. The painting was just extraordinary. And I would have never dreamed that that would touch me the way it did. And yeah. I, I agree with you. There's a gentleman called John Hood who actually is an orchardist. You know, he, he, he works preserving trees and forests, etc. But it took him 10 years to do this particular artwork, which is just like pin pinning you're pointing yes, i yes. don't know what the a true expression of it is but he did an entire picture of jesus with with the fawns and everything else and it took him 10 years to do because everything is wow. this point thing i mean he wasn't doing it full time obviously yeah. part time but but when you know i'm not religious either but when when you look at that painting the the the, the entire essence of what he believed in and what was channeled for him to do comes right out and a lot of art is a form of channeling isn't it it is it really is and those are the really good days when mm. you're really in the zone and mm. it doesn't happen every time you go to the easel but it certainly when it, it can happen and that's what we all live for those moments do you actually have when you hit your canvas I am going to paint this and this tree is going to be here, this, there, and there. Or is it like, I have an image of what I want to paint, but then the paintbrush, it shows you the way. It's kind of a combination of all of it because mm. I start out on the canvas behind me. I've got the trees chalked out with a piece of chalk and I've got a photograph. This is a commission. I, lo I love to work on commission paintings. Mm. And the reason I love commissions is because I get to work one-on-one -on -one with my clients mm. and do something that, you know, they, they have a vision of, yes, but obviously I can't see what's in their head, but I somehow have that whole intuitive connection mm. with my clients. We visit, we talk and we share a moment and then I get to produce something that's only in my head. Mm. And often it's, you know, can touch them in a way it's of a special scene often. And I start out with a photograph of the scene that they are looking for on the painting and then I make my own interpretation of it. I start yeah. with where I'm going to put the tree, but then I put the photograph away and I just let it come. Yeah. And then I go into that zone and I don't know what colors necessarily I'm going to use. I don't know what it's going to look like. It just happens. And I start out with an idea and I go in a certain direction and then I let it happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's true artistry. You know, my brother is an author and he will, you know, have kind of the, the the structure of you know what the chapter is going to do what this person's going to do but then as he's writing it the characters take on you know their own yes. voice and yes. then you know he can read back and go oh interesting yeah. you know and it's yes. you know when you can be intrigued by your own writing you That's know because basically it it's just channeled through you and you read it and i've i've done that on my own stuff that i've read something um that i've had on a blog and, and who wrote this to see my own name at the bottom of it? And it's like, yes. you know, you're in the moment, you've written it, and, and then you kind of forget it. I know with yes. a painting, a little harder to forget because it's definitely there to remind you. But it's, um, is it hard to let go of a painting that you've done for someone else? Well, it goes or back. Or even to, ones that you sell, you know, that you. It goes painted. back to my initial mentor who gave me this great advice when I was just beginning and she said to don't ever get attached to your finished paintings, because as a painter, 
once the painting is signed and finished, you have no use for it. So mm -hmm. your love and your passion is in your blank canvas. And I never forgot that. So out of mm -hmm. all the years, I think I've regretted selling one painting. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those kind of transition pieces where I just was really in the zone. I made the jump kind of from here to a bit of an abstract. And I was able to like really go to the next level in my art when it, this particular painting came along. And I think that was the only time I ever regretted, mm. you know, I, I, I had a hard time letting go of that right. painting, but right. for the most part, no, I, I, I don't like them when the paintings stick around, you know? So it's to let the child free into the That's world, right? right? Yes. You know, and, yes. and go and be that expression for someone else. And, you, you right. know, it's, um, I love looking at art and then uh, I see one thing and I love to look at art again and then I see it in something different. And it's a, a lot to do with your frame of mind, where you're at. Yes. And you can go look at a picture and go, oh, I didn't notice that before. It's you true. Know? And something is sticking out on you or it's, it's saying this today. And I'm one of these people that see faces even in tiles or patterns on the floor and things yes. like this. I just yeah. constantly see the faces. And I love that you don't know what you're going to see. Right. Yes, yes. And I, it's, and in, when you're looking at painting in different lights and in different days and things are always uh, in a good painting, it will always mm -hmm. bring out different aspects on different days, for sure. A lot of people keep art like forever and people say, well, you know, don't you want to change it up? And you may introduce another piece of art in there, but we become attached to certain pieces. Would you think it's because in a way it's told the story, you know, of you as, uh, you know, being able to see it differently, that that painting has journeyed with you, that it's almost become a friend? Well, you know, it was interesting because when one of my mentors passed away, uh, I went to visit his studio. His wife invited me to his studio after he had passed. And I was, had the great fortune of sitting there by myself with all of Keith's last paintings. And I went in there thinking I was going to be very, very upset and crying. And I took the box of Kleenex and I went in and I sat with all of his paintings and I could feel him as if he was mm. right there with me. So that made me look at original art in a totally different way because I realized that the artist energy mm. or who they are winds up on that canvas. Mm -hmm. So then I don't know if that kind of answers your question, but I always think that, you know, it's almost like a living thing. You, yes. you the energy kind of gets put into it. A person's heart and soul gets mm. put into that canvas. So I look at the original art that I have in my house and I realize that, oh, I've still got that painter with me, you yes. know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't thought of it that way because, you know, you have a synergy between certain yes. paintings right yes but I haven't thought you know I often think it's to do with the actual picture and what it says to you but I actually haven't kind of thought about it's actually the artist's essence yes. that is in that picture that is with you yes so yes. you know like people will live on through the story well they'll live on through the art they'll live on through they the will. music through the books they right will. and so it's they're in that picture whatever they've yes. drawn yeah, and you think about all the, the, the world famous, the Mona Lisa and the Michelangelo's, all of those paintings that have been, you know, 500 years later that are still in our mm. mind's eye. You can, and when you see them in real life, you know, to see the Sistine Chapel, it just totally yeah. knocks your socks off. Yes. And it's just, you feel the energy mm. even after all these centuries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any particular artist that is one, is your go-to, is the one that, you know, always gets you? Oh, there are so many and it changes all the time. So I'm, I've got, a, as you mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm really into books. Mm. So I like talking about books, reading books, suggesting books. So I've got quite the library and I just am always going that there. That's my go-to when I can't get to actual art galleries or museums, mm. especially through COVID. So, and, and it, my, my art books, they change from day to day. Mm. Sometimes I'm into the group of seven landscapes, Emily Carr, the, I like a lot of the Canadian painters, of mm. course, because I am a Canadian painter, mm. but uh, yeah, no, I, I do the whole range. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm inspired by art. <laughs> yes. 
Oh. Yeah, and you never know what you know. What, I mean, there's. I interviewed somebody a little while ago, and her art is kind of sketching. You know, on her way to work, she would sketch people on the transit with her, and sometimes oh. it would just be a hand holding onto a roll, or just somebody's weave, or somebody's this and that. But it's oh. capturing that you know in motion. You know what's going on, and it. Uh, she calls it drawer on the go, and it's uh, it's fascinating because just in that momentary sketch, you've caught someone's life. So, you know, someone that in motion. Is it's incredible. Yeah. That is not as easy as you would no. think. No. And and she's kind of made it's become a thing now, you know, that oh, because wow. she's she's telling the story of her community, of the cultures of the people. And sometimes they're very detailed and sometimes just so simplistic, like, you know, three hands holding on to the railing and all different type wow. of hands. And yet I was drawn to that picture. And I mean, it's three hands holding on to a railing. Why am I so drawn to it? You know, and it's like I love that. But I love I love art that creates a conversation even in your own head. Yes, yes, for sure. And I was just, I was, I'm just working on a book review right now. And it's a book of poetry and sketches. And it's very similar type of sketches to what you're just referring mm -hmm. to. And I just love it. I just mm -hmm. love it. So, yeah. So what was the transition to, I mean, obviously you love reading. Was it because of you love reading that you decided to then be a professional reviewer? Well, I've just started the last few years doing a lot of writing and I haven't published anything or released anything. So I just, uh, in March, I launched my blog on my brand new website. So that's the first time I've really kind of let it out into the world, some of my stories and how I started to paint. And so I've been very into writing. And so doing the book reviews has been my first world bit into the world of literary. And I've just really enjoyed being a part of that world it's it's similar kind of a bit of crossover between the art and the literary but uh so it kind of go they kind of have been meshing together quite lovely and that's the cloud lake literary yes so i mean yeah. i mean again it's, it's still tapping into the arts and then you know i wonder how much of reading someone's book and doing a review of it of how much it affects even your own perception of your own art yeah very much so. And, you know, I'm picking up so much on, on writing as well. So that's like a whole different venture, venture that I've been taking the last few years into the world of words, which mm. is so fascinating. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. You know, you know, my brother is an author, of course, I'm more into kind of, obviously, in the interview, it's the words, right? But it, it is that there is a language of curiosity of love of intrigue that can be written in word could be written in art you know could be written in any you know spoken word and the thing is this i think the more we become curious in our lives you know exploratory yes. and wonderment the more that it actually ignites and opens up our minds hearts and souls and the more engaged we become in life for sure. And that is exactly the same, the crossover into art again, mm. because you have to be very visual and be able to see what is in front of you. And this is one of the things that I have this conversation with my students on a regular basis about how you're not actually painting what you're seeing, but painting mm. what you think you see. Yes. And so it's a whole lot of training my students to really see what's in front of their faces and to be curious and observe what's actually there. And, you know, we get so busy in our day to day lives that we just keep going and going and going and don't take time to just really be in present and in yeah. the moment and yeah. looking at what you're looking at. Yes, which is really, really important. You know, like, there are many people that live their life like paint by numbers. Yes. Right. And, yeah. and it's, it's, it's making you absent from living. Yeah. Right. So Indeed. what you're saying with the art is that you're painting this, but you're painting it from your inner perception. Yes. Right. Yeah. From your inner eye. What does that see? Because you don't dictate what it sees. You allow it to reveal what it sees. Yes. Yes. And, you know, sometimes just being, like I say, in that moment and seeing what is actually in front of you rather than what you think you're seeing, because we kind of, our brains kind of distort mm -hmm. things because we're so programmed to be set in a certain way yeah. and we're not really there. 
yeah. some of the time. So yes, exactly. You know, like um, a musician will take the words and always sees the rhythm in it. You know, a poet will see the rhyme in it. You, as now a writer, do you see the art in your writing? I yeah, and I'm excited now because. The writing reminds me of when I was learning to paint mm. when I was back when I was 22 years old and there was that real excitement and passion for this whole new world of art. And I'm now getting that excitement as I'm learning to write. Mm -hmm. And the more experience I get in the writing world, the more excited I am to share what I'm doing and to find those words. It's like finding those colors and those shapes yeah. and lines. And yes. you, you do see the world in a different way. Yes, it always fascinates me, you know, like a, a, a writer is from the story driven by the characters in the song, it's driven by an emotion in the rhyme, it's, it's driven, you know, by the rhythm of life. So, you know, as you say, kind of writing from the, the lines, the contour, the colors, the flavors that kind of come out. So there's always kind of a dominance, isn't there, on, on which will dictate the way you're going to do something. Yeah, for sure. And that's why I'm, I'm really immersing myself in a lot of books right now, a lot of different types of books, art books, memoirs. I'm just, yeah. It's uh, so how do you go about world. Oh, I know. And, and but it's all part of the same world. It's just a, you know, it's like, it's all part of the same orchestra. It's they're just different instruments. That's right? a very good way to put it for <laughs> sure. So how do people kind of, you know, submit a book or do you pick out a book or, you know, how are you working that? Well, right now through Cloud Lake, Lake Literary, they've been sending me books from the publishers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, I've got this beautiful, beautiful hardcover art book from about the painter Banksy. Mm hmm. And um, it's ex beautiful. And so what could be better than for me to get mail? Yes. That is beautiful hardcover art book. So I'm very excited to uh, get dive into this one. So far, so good. It's just, uh, yeah, this book talks a lot about what art really is. And I am mm. not sure if you know about the painter Banksy who kind of does the street art. And he goes, no, but I, it, yeah, it rings a bell in the back of the yeah, head. But yeah, yeah. yeah, so the book is a lot about what is art and mm. should it, you know, the value of art, should it be sold? You know, yeah. he's, he's a fascinating, he's a bit of a rebel. So I love rebels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's yeah, there is fun. no box to think out of, you know, it's just yes. people who aren't afraid to express and, and share their particular point of view. And anything that makes us think away from our stagnant thoughts that's right you know, that, that forms a conversation that has us look at things from a different angle and try to learn something from a different perspective is yes. healthy for our psyche it is and Banksy asks a lot of great questions mm. and nobody knows what he looks like he goes and paints on buildings in the middle of the night and then all of a sudden they wake up and there's this painting on the side of a building yeah and you know the artistry be able to do that in a yes. night it's yes. like you know you see um these artists where they can paint upside down and their hands this that etc and then when they reveal it it's like oh my god and they've just yes. done it in a matter of minutes and it's like how do they see that well you, you know, know that is one that? of the tricks i teach some of my students actually when wow. they're really tripping up and they're getting in their head and they can't break the cycle that's going round and round in their head. I tell them to turn their painting upside down and paint the shapes. Don't paint what it is you're thinking you're painting. Like you're, you know, I'm like, no, you're not painting a tree. You're just painting some shapes with some a paintbrush and some paint. Right. You're not painting an actual tree, you know? And so just turn it upside down, paint the shapes, paint the colors, paint the lines, and then they get it. Yeah. And when yeah. they turn it back up, it is it's, then revealed. It's yeah, it's there. Yeah, and it's quite fascinating, you know, because really, again, stop looking at things just head on, yeah. right? You know, it's yeah. again when we see things from a different perspective, we really are going to be seeing the truth of it, right? Yes. No matter what yeah. angle, which yeah. is again what we're always mm -hmm. looking for. And art is the truth. It says I love interviewing musicians as well. They're so true to that, to their instrument, to their artistry. That's that, right. that, you know, their struggle, of course, is making a living out of it, but they know who they are, why they are, and what they're here to do. 
and it and you know they can't choose to do anything else exactly exactly That's how it is yeah. yeah and so you know when when the art discovers you you know yes. I, you and then you become part of that instrument yours is That's... the paintbrush or now the words um you couldn't be anything else other than what you are it's that's a perfect way to describe it yeah but doesn't mean you can't branch off right it's true so you've branched off into the words and you know but what's that got to do with paint well again as you said you write from the same vision as you paint exactly exactly yeah and i've got the same excitement now it's Mm. a whole new avenue to port to portray what I have going on in this head of mine. Do you find it quite intriguing? Because like when you sit back and you look at a painting, you can have some satisfaction of the way the painting is, has become. As you said, you put your signature on and now it's going to go out into the world. But yes. when you read something you've written and you look back and you read it, does it surprise you of how that comes into picture? Well, I did some learning through Natty. Natalie Goldberg, I took one of her online writing courses and she said, you're free to write the worst crap ever in your Mm. journal. So then you just sit there and you kind of just keep continuing on, keep that pen moving. And I think that was very valuable advice. Mm. And it's the same. I try to tell my students as well, you know, I don't, you're not going to always paint the masterpiece, right? You're going to have to go through a lot of garbage before you get to the really good stuff. And so when I go back and I read through my notebooks, I do find some really gem, good gems in those words, you know, but not everything is awesome. But then there are those little sentences that have such value. And I, it's, it is when you step back and go, where did that come from? Yeah. 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 And that's, you know, I do a show every week, Sarah's view of life. And sometimes I may only have a word or a thought. Yeah. And I press record and as it comes out you know and then oh, I write I it or sometimes I write it and then then read it and do it but it is it, most of the time it is just push the button and let it come out and let it be yes. what it's meant to be yes. and it's that that is that zone you're talking about that you know I call it kind of channeling you know the wisdom that comes through you and if we could sometimes get out of our own way and just simply allow yes. you know the the artistry will be revealed it's true. I agree with you. And I know what you're, what you're referring to. I'm going to have to check out that Sarah's view. I haven't, I haven't, said, I haven't looked at that yet. But yeah, there, there's sometimes just 10 minutes, sometimes half an hour, but it is, it is all to do with, you know, my perceptions. So it's Sarah's view of life, but I um, love that. But they're all kind of in the moment. Yes. I've been doing a 10 minute Monday art tip on YouTube mm. and on Facebook live every Monday. And I just, kind of show up and start yeah. talking about art for 10 minutes and everybody keeps telling me when do you how long does it take you to plan out your right. art tips and I'm like no the best ones just kind of come on yes. Sunday I you know plan it out and just do that oh I'm having a delivery to my front door here. <laughs> of course right of course. Um, yeah but uh yeah they just come the best tips or videos are just when they happen yes and they just come out and when you know what it is you're talking about, it works out really well. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's... Deliveries are fun. What did you get? <laughs> <laughs> I get them leaving me damn notices that I've got to go and pick up. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he left. We're good. We're all good. Um, we ask people to be present, to step into themselves. You know, uh, predominantly my shows are about leaving the outside living and living from the inside, knowing who you are. What is your beautiful instrument? How do you play it? Which orchestra do you join to play it in? And when we're in that self-discovery of really how awesome in our flawsomeness that we are, you know, we really allow our own instrument, no matter what it is, to really allow itself in its own self-discovery as to what it is and where it belongs. But you can't paint from the outside. You can't write from the outside. It very much is an inside out job, isn't it? It absolutely is. It really is. And you have to be able to put yourself into that space where you can have it channel. I, I don't really want to use the word channel, but that's what's coming to my mind right yeah. now. You want to be in that. Well, there's a whole left brain, right brain type of thing as well. So um 
yeah, you've got to be able to set aside the day to day yes. mundane world, you know, don't be thinking about doing the dishes and all that you need to do emails, I shut the computer off, I don't do the social media, I just really focus on the paint and mm. getting I have my music on. There are all these things that I do to get myself into that space. And so I can tune in and not just be painting what I think I should be painting, but painting. Yeah, because there is the conditioning. You know, there is the, now you should be doing this and you must do that. And who is the end user and all of that. And that is part of the human mechanics. They're going to go in, they're going to ask yes. those questions. You don't want to paint from that because that's not where no. the artistry is. The no. artistry is the inner voice and it's going to come out through the paintbrush or through the typewriter. You know, yes. It, yes. That's, it is like shut the other off so that it, the other has their voice, the, it has the freedom to really express oneself. Exactly. It's very true. And I mean, art is kind of an interesting, interesting, has different dynamics because there is the art theory there is your color mixing your color theory your composition so it does take a certain intellect to do a really good yeah. painting and all the masters michelangelo they all have these elements in it but then you have to like know it inside of you yeah you have to study it know it understand it and then be able to let it all go and just let it flow through the brush so I, I call that the knowingness where you know the the wisdom comes through that that channel that resonates with the heart and truth. It goes to the spirit interaction and the mind will know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. That's so right. your, your knowledge is there ready to be extracted, but that's yes. not the be all and the end all. It's what do you true. do with this knowledge? You need the wisdom to know how to extract this, this and this to put together the vision that is uh, that the wisdom sees. Yes. And I find it very interesting too with my students because I see them struggling mm -hmm. with the wisdom as they're just learning. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me back to those early days when I first picked up my paintbrush and what a challenge it was to figure out which color to put where. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Picasso that says painting is easy as long as you put the right color in the right spot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I see their struggles with oh, that didn't turn out and they're scraping the paint off. And uh, I just, they remind me back to my early days, but then I also have the challenge of being an, an instructor to get those thought processes through. Mm -hmm. And how do you explain art, you know? Yes. Yeah. I remember uh, winning an art competition at school that I didn't even know I had joined. Um, we were just told to paint you know do something and I did a circus scene but I had the elephant walking the tightrope I had everybody oh. doing what they shouldn't be doing awesome. all right and yes. I did it in kind of wax type crayons and really funky and my, my art teacher loved it because it was completely out of the box and totally different and oh, yes. and uh, you know, and it was like well you know it's not as good as so-and-so's and yes, but so and so's is painting for what was expected from her. Oh yes, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And you, were, and you just went wacky land and just painted what you felt I like painting. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was a it was a good lesson for me because I was so busy trying to be or give what I thought the teacher wanted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I love it. Some of my students, they always say, oh, I'm going rogue on you. And often mm -hmm. go off on their tangent. I just let them go. And then yes. sometimes we have to go and, re you know, fix a little, little this, a little of that. But 90% of the time, they've totally gone and done an awesome. So I just let them go. And I'm like, oh, well, if it doesn't work out, we'll just fix it later. Like, you know, there's no harm ever. Right. And in art, especially. Yeah. I mean, look at Picasso, you know, look at all the different type of art that is out there. Is there really a wrong way or a right way? As long as it comes across cleanly yes. in the sense yes. that it's defined, yeah. you know, it, it is, I mean, Picasso absolutely loved for his abstractness, right? And, totally. and then you've got the Mona Lisa with the yes. whole beautiful expression of her story, two utterly different paintings but each one of them yes. have a voice. And so if you are, you know, my, my um, youngest daughter, which I wish she would get back to art, but she's a working mother with a one-year-old. So it's a little bit different. That's but hard. She is, you know, a, a 
black and white artists and she'll draw, draw funky people but it's all to do with expression and you know oh, it's yes. I, I I've always looked at her art and say it's telling a story and I wanted her literally to do you know a not a comic but you know a picture book of these particular actions with the words of expression because they tell a story of how she sees life um, but she's yeah. not there yet you know she's busy in her career and baby and this and that and I'm just praying one day she will you know oh, go she there will. she's no. got a long future ahead of her oh uh, yeah she does yeah, yes yeah. and of course baby takes up a lot of time right now those so. are important yes, yes. Yeah. baby's coming first yes most certainly yeah. but you know you know it when you when you do see it in somebody you know that this is this is their voice Yes. But they've got to discover that for themselves, yes. however much you for see it, sure. right? So that's kind of, I guess, my my role as an instructor mm. is to kind of bring that out and give them some tools to get that from their point A to point B, yeah. you know, and onto the canvas. And it's not, I had forgotten how hard it is. Mm. They all tell me painting is hard. And I'm like, oh, it really is until mm. you kind of can go from point A to point B. <laughs> Well, I think it's, I think the hardest thing is, is trusting yourself and discovering your own voice. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Once you've discovered that voice and it comes through you easily, then you go, okay, this is the artist that I am. And that doesn't and mean that you won't evolve or explore, true. but, but you know that this, this is it. This is my expression. But discovering what that expression is, is trial and tribulation, isn't it? It is. And it's so fascinating because I have so many different students from all different walks of life. One was a bookkeeper. And so she really struggled at the early days and she still does. And then all of a sudden she'll make the leap and the painting will come and then she'll start being able to do what she wants and she'll be hell happy. And then she'll start another painting and it's just like, I can't do this. And she, mm. it takes a while to get her to back in the rhythm again. And it's so fascinating to see everybody progress in their own different ways. Thanks to their life experiences. Like we said earlier, mm. it's all those moments in our lives that kind of add up to where we are today. I think a lot of it is also discovering, you know, which, which is the, your application. You know, I'm, dyslectic so anytime I tried to write it would be frustrating for me because you'd have oh. to correct it and this and that and then when I got a computer and I started writing and I could correct it easily and I could see it more clearly um you know it finally had found a voice I, wow. you know I would you know became the blogger became an article writer and and it was I didn't know I could do this and the computer and a lot of people talk about no you need the hand you need to write by the hand because the hand is where the truth is well not if it is no. your obstacle right yeah exactly so exactly. you go to the instrument that helps you you know that's with the right. paintbrush which is your paintbrush that is the one that's totally. going to bring out your art right yes absolutely there is like th that's what you were saying as well like there's no right or wrong when it comes to art and there shouldn't be any right or wrong in in writing either. Right. Exactly. I mean, clearly, obviously, the grammar and spelling. Yes. You yes. know, which, you know, that's what Grammarly is for. <laughs> Spell yeah. check is for, right? But it is about so many people are so busy trying to be perfect to follow a format that they forget yes. that is stifling the voice. Let yes. the voice out. You can correct it afterwards. And that is right? a hard lesson for a lot of people. And my yeah. students get tripped up on that all the time and even like I I'll, one of my biggest lines is we will fix things at the very end yeah and so they have to leave that little stroke that they don't like on the canvas until the very end of the painting I said if at the end of the day you don't like it we'll fix it then but meanwhile you change a bunch of other things and it might totally yes fix the problem and so then it doesn't need to be fixed and they yeah. they they struggle they want to have every little bit right. perfect all the way along and it doesn't no that's you know, not what art is it was no. you know like that sketch I was telling you about she was busy drawing something and she was drawing somebody with um I think particular braids anyway somebody came and sat next to her and the pen went this way and she goes oh what am I going to do with this uh, and then yes. it's like okay I'm going to take it here <laughs> and, yeah. and, and yeah, yeah, let yeah. it become something else right yeah. like, don't get so caught up exactly. in that flaw because you know it's meant to be flawsome you know it is a representation and it's um you know there are some minor things that maybe need to be tidied up or fixed up like editing you know yes. in anything yes. that we do but 
let the story be the story. Indeed. Indeed. I agree. You know, and I'm so, ah, people get so tight, I guess. That's, yeah. There's, there, it's, that's that in a nutshell. You know, my, my, my brother is a, a, a literary a master, so he teaches people how to write and he's retired now and he's an author himself and I started writing for his magazine and he would get in and change everything and I said no please don't do that you know correct the spelling of the grammar but don't rewrite it in your understanding because you're yes. losing what I'm trying to say right oh, okay all right so he would put it out there and then you kind of get but why are so many people commenting uh -huh. on what you're writing because as far as what he was concerned I hadn't written it properly Right. But what I was writing was reflecting on people, you yes. know, what, what it was reflecting. And he couldn't, he couldn't get that. It's like the same with the podcast. Why aren't you like Rachel Meadows? She's a political commentary. You know, I'm not, you know, and it's like, be careful of those around you. And I love my brother to death, but be careful. And I've interviewed him a great deal. So he knows my style, but be careful of the people around you who are going to critique from their understanding. That's right. Don't let them stifle your voice, your artistry. That's exactly it. And I was just um, with the book reviews, the critiques of the books have kind of helped me because I, I can, when I'm working with my students, I can critique, oh, you know, your composition isn't quite right in this spot. Your tree is exactly smack dab in the middle. If you move it slightly to the right, it will be a more powerful composition and so it's like pretty cut and dry easy stuff little you know if you move it here it'll be a little it'll be stronger and I can I'm learning that that's the same way you would do a book review you know yes. you don't want to rip the author to no. Shred it, no. or you know or change their voice at all you just want to correct the grammar and the mm. whatnot and I'm not giving personal opinions about what I think or what they're saying I'm just like oh this didn't quite flow right in this section yeah. or whatever. So yes. it's another pair of eyes. Yeah. You know, like if a, a singer is learning to sing, they want somebody who's going to give them the feedback. You yes. know, I mean, that's one of the reasons I like the voice with working with the mentors. You know, you've got more in you. Let's let's go dig deep. You know, you can go higher or, yes. you know, that too much bravado there. Bring it down. You don't need to be that. And it's that other observation as to let's bring out this strength. You know, or you stop yes. limiting yourself there and you're bringing out the artistry in the person. So, yes. you know, it's not criticism. Yes. The critiquing is to yes. bring out the essence in you in a more defined way. Yeah. Yeah. And you want that person to continue with their own voice and their yeah. own interpretation of the scene. Yes. You know, my students each, it's amazing how we can all paint the same seen and it all looked totally different each one of us you know and, and you know somebody may use oil somebody may use acrylic some people may just use charcoal you know what yes. is your instrument that's right, right. And it's your representation it's your tool it's true yeah i am i have to say my students will tell you i'm a little biased towards the oil paints <laughs> <laughs> because that's your instrument yeah, right that yeah, is your instrument yeah, yeah, yeah. but so, they may learn to to paint in 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 your paints but then find you know what i also want to explore this and this is my avenue sure, but what sure. they've learned with you yes right gives yes. them a better insight and more depth into exactly. reach out and explore and explore other things yes. doesn't mean oh no you've got to do it that way for the rest of your life it, yeah. it is the, it is a basis a foundation of understanding that now allows you to explore and i just want them to be excited about art and mm. art in general like yeah. all art you know yes. it's just an amazing world i mean we see such incredible street art today unbelievable yes. street art and it's like you know you see a, a boring um you know wall and somebody comes out and puts out a, a most beautiful art piece there and then you know the city wants to paint it over no leave it alone well it that's has, what this banksy book talks it, about all of that street art so exactly you know as you're driving yes. along your eyes drawn to oh wonderful and it's conversation or it's stimulation you know and it's uh, you want that there don't restrict art just to a canvas let anything exactly. in life be the canvas 
And the street art is so important because then it's available to everyone, not yeah. just those who go to art museums and galleries yes. and things. It makes yeah. it accessible. Yes. So important. Right. So important. You know, support of artists is very, very important because let's face it, uh, there aren't very many artists who can sustain themselves. You know, it's it's a hard world to to make a living out of. It is. Uh, and, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, very often the artists have to go and do something rather mundane for their bread and butter, you yes. know, so they can actually do the art that they want to do. And but it's like it, that's just understanding that's part of the price you have to pay. You don't have to lose yeah. yourself. You have no. to compartmentalize. Yes. Yes. And even what you were mentioning earlier about your daughter having her baby. Yes. And it's a whole time thing as well. You know, I chose not to have a family and it's just been a whole different avenue altogether. Yes. yes. You know, I, you know, devoted my last 20 years to my art, 25 years to my art. Mm -hmm. And I gave up a lot of different things, but that's, yes. it's been incredibly fulfilling for me to do it that way. But it's your not choice. for everyone. It's not for no. everyone. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's your choice, you know, and this is under choose positive living and it's being positive for you. It's the way you've wanted to live your life. It was a positive yes. choice. And, you know, we, we, we need to understand, but, you know, when, when you talk about an artist, when you talk about a musician, they are what they are. They have to do what they have to do, they have to. but it also means that you have to go and do something else for the sustainability to be yeah. able to do what you want to do, yes. you know, in putting out the shows. I love this part of it. Then there's all the other admin stuff that could be rather oh, drudgery, yes. right? Yes. But it allows me to put out the piece of art of exactly. the wonderful information. Yeah. So it's it's a give and take in life. And it really is. And I think when you when you look at an artist that loves the art they're doing, no matter what it is, they're so enriched and they're so abundant in the heart and soul and spirit of them that they actually need less to live on anyway. That's how I am, you know. Mm. Yeah. For sure. I don't go out a whole lot. I want to be here in my studio anyway. So what do yes. I, you know, I was going to say, I don't, uh, I do like to go out. I enjoy, you know, the world out there. And sometimes you have to go out into the world in order to come back into the studio and portray it. Yes, exactly. You got to get excitement. You got to get energy moving. And sometimes I can be a bit of a hermit and stay here mm. and not want to leave my front door. I just want to be in this room in my studio. My students come to me. I've got, the best of it, all worlds pretty much yeah but uh yeah I, I live simply definitely with what i just do what i need mm. I definitely you know do. of course especially with you know covid in the last couple of years there's an awful lot of people who become the hermit and realize yes. you know what i actually enjoy my own time i do you know with myself i, I enjoy yes. what yeah. i'm doing yeah. you know yeah. whereas a lot of people who kind of realize i was going out to look for life to have meaning but now I was forced to stay home and I found the meaning within my life yes yes uh, it's uh, definitely I hope it's well I'll be able to walk away with the positives from it all yeah you're, you're living the positives yeah yeah you know if you're happy at the end of every day with what you're doing and you get up every single day looking forward to another day of it exactly right that is that's, that's truly living life Yes, that's a fortunate life for sure. Yeah, yeah. We all want to find that. You know, there, there's so many people through COVID that have pivoted, you know, that, oh, gosh, I was living a lie. I was living the ex expectation of me and I wasn't living me. And I've just given all of that up now and I'm going down this road of my self-discovery. And it's so wonderful to see because whether they're a painter or a writer, we're seeing artistry come alive exactly it's it's it is a different world and i know a lot of people are have struggled with the whole mm. staying at home and changing the way they view their life and are anxious to get back out there and i'm not quite anxious to get back yeah. out there yet no i mean you know i get out there have done all the way through covid with walks going shopping and this and that but my life is very much about my family you know it's a i yes. realized in another show i was doing somebody saying i don't have an awful lot of close friends and i thought oh, gosh, no no do i i have a lot of beautiful acquaintances and community that i have but actually close friends because you get to a stage in your life that when you do give your energy to someone you want to give it to people that you're very close to special with because you yes. you realize that you don't need the many 
because there's agree. a lot of enrichment in the few. <laughs> yes, you, that is a very good point. Very good point. And I'm finding I'm very uh, strategic as to who I spend my time with. Is that that's kind of what you're saying, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be somebody that's in the same realm as you. No. You know, it's just that, do you feel comfortable with that person? Uh, and, you know, can you be yourself? That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, and time is very limited. So I yeah. want to spend it where I can, doing yes. what I love. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I'm fortunate to be able to say that. How long does it take you to do a painting on average? Well, every painting is different. Everyone is different. And in the last a couple of years, I've had some anemia issues. So I'm not painting as many hours a day as I, I used to. So I'm still trying to get my, my painting arm built back up after mm. a little bit of a reprieve with some health issues. So yeah, so how I'm much not a, as speedy as I used to be. Right. How much is your, your MD kind of getting your way now? I mean, because that's never going to go away. But you know, as you're getting older, is it creating different challenges? Well, um, I've had some different challenges, actually, like I wound up with breast cancer four oh years God. ago. Oh, no. So that was a that set me back a little while. Oh, and right. So, so went through chemotherapy and all of that. And then I went into some anemia and I'm still now just kind of on the rebound after four years. Mm. So I'm now back to work. So it's yeah. been a, that was a bit of a side step that yeah. I wasn't too, I, I don't recommend. No, no, definitely not. Yeah. Were you able to paint at all during that time? Not much. And I wasn't really, you know, In inspired. Yeah. 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 This is the first, you know, this past six months or so is I'm finally feeling back to myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a, a life is an interruptus, but it doesn't mean it's a total end. Yeah. Right. You know, there's, sure. there's a, we never know quite the reasons of why it interrupts us until sometimes, you know, we decide finally get, oh, okay, okay, I understand. You yes. know, sometimes it's that redirection. Was it that redirection into the reviewing of books for you? That was a big part of the whole writing. You know, when yeah. I wasn't painting, I yeah. was able to delve into the words. Yes. And I just sat and wrote every day. I, I didn't take a day off from my writing, but I mm. totally took a step back from my painting. And I wasn't even sure if I would ever paint again. Mm. So, right. you know, now I'm back at it. So. Right. But, yeah. you know, with, with another branch on your tree. Yeah. For right. Sure. So, you know, for maybe sure. that branch would not have been discovered had you not had to go through the health issues that you went through. It, you just never know. And it told these experiences, they definitely change you. Yeah. And so they just, you know, as I said, more branches on the tree, which is, uh, you know, which is exciting. I always love to see people branching out into other avenues as well, because there's a common thread between all of it. There is for sure. And I did one of my my 10 minute Monday art tips this past week was all on endless possibilities. Mm. And when you have bl blank canvas and a pile full of new colors of paint and th the possibilities are truly endless. Yeah. And that's, that's just it. with painting. That's <laughs> just with painting. Never mind the yeah. words. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, this is where I do, you know, use the blank canvas reference a great deal is that paint the picture that you want to be in, not yes. the picture that's being dealt to you. Right. That's past. You know, you can choose positive living and let that canvas be of what you want, not what you don't want. That's right. That's so right. But, you know, you still have to take those, go down those roads that you don't want to go down to. Like, oh, I yeah, did. you know, it's, it's a, yeah, it's the detour. Yes. Detour. You know, to to yes. leading you back to where, on the road that you need to be on. And I'm glad it's led you back to your art. And of course, obviously now teaching art as well. Right. So for you, it's kind of, really as I said branched you off and encompassed you even more it from, has from all of for this. sure for sure and I love yeah it's a full package now versus in the beginning it was just me and my canvas and my yeah. my clients and now it's like I've got a whole network of my students mm. and they come back year after year every week you know we're together and through COVID that was incredibly powerful mm. I I was able to be solitary but I was I was one of those very lucky people that was teaching art lessons and then I rather easily made the sidestep into zoom classes and yes. you know not everybody could do that to just transform their career into this online world and I was made a seamless transition mm -hmm. and I was fortunate grateful that my students stood by me and mm -hmm. yeah they are yeah. great great 
support for me, my, my students. Well, but you know, also you're an inspiration, you know, you didn't let the cancer or, you know, the immune or anything else cripple you, you know, it was okay, this is a challenge, I need to take a step back, I need to put that time on of loving healing on myself. Yes. But you know, you came back and you came back even stronger and you came back branching out with even more ideas and and it just shows people that whatever happens to us it's happening for us in some form or way and you know it is it is about that challenge of getting through of it and discovering something because of it that's right exactly and yeah I, th I think back to those moments when I was in the thick of it all and those that statement I would don't know if I would have agreed with it at the time when yes I was in the midst of yes. it all but uh, looking back and Sight, yes, for sure. Mm. Now that I'm on the other side of it all, yes, I mean, yeah. you stay on the other side of it all. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think you know, a lot of the time, you know, these things come along, you know, um, to either show us another path or to show us how strong and courageous we are, but show us our abilities. But sometimes it is simply to be that inspiration that you know, you, you can have MD, then you've had cancer, then you have these other struggles, yet you still choose, you know, to do your art, to teach your art, to write, to, to do the reviews. It's like, okay, I had an interruptus, but that yeah. wasn't the end of my life. I didn't give in. That's right. right? I chose it, to rise up. It is a choice. You, you are correct in that, mm. for sure. And, you know, not everybody... I, I've also had a good support system. Mm. So that's been amazing. And I don't think I could have done it on my own. I had a group of friends that gathered around me, my family. So I, I've had a lot of the, not everybody has all of that. Yeah, no. So, And, you know, that's where we need as a community. If people haven't got the blood family, you know, it's that's where we step in as a community and become exactly, that family of support. Exactly. You know, it's where we're all in this together and with the more we reach out and help each other along the way because there isn't anybody that goes through life without some form of challenges along yes. the way yes and even though it is that person's discovery of their own courage strength and abilities they still need the help you know True. while they're while they're learning to walk again while they're learning to dis discover why and all of that they still need the help along the way for sure. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I think that's why I enjoy my teaching so much because mm. as you said earlier, art can be a therapy. And so mm. I'm, I'm very grateful to be able to pass on this knowledge that I know to my students. And I know some of them are in the depths of big life struggles right yes. at the moment and it's helping them. There's two hours a week where they can just step aside from mm. daily life and their stress and just paint and we can be together and they are learning a new skill and they're expressing themselves and it's just the, one of the most rewarding things I've ever done is to be teaching yeah, and it's a form of meditation too isn't it it is so, it is yes. which everybody needs to know which way they can meditate so no one will have to be cross-legged on the floor hum and hiring you know yeah. it could be a walk in nature it could be writing it could be art it is a place where you you literally come from your inside out and you let your outside in go and yes. you know calm everything down be attached to something let it be an expression it is a great big huge deep breath it is it really is and i'm you know and so many people don't know how to do that no no and the, the willingness to want to learn that has to be their free will for sure right? there's plenty of people and plenty of avenues that will share with you yes. their avenue and you've got to be willing to try different avenues Yes. Yeah, it is a choice. That's what you were saying as well. And I'm, uh, that's a good way to put it. I like that word. I'm going to stick with that word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am so glad that you are, you know, pivoting over into other areas as well. And, uh, you know, let's, let's look at the, you know, the, the Cloud Lake literary. Um, and it, um, I've got, hang on, I've got it right here. I am, yep, sorry, I haven't got my glasses on. So hard for me to read. Let's put glasses on. I can see what I'm doing. So it literally is where readers meet storytellers. And you've got the Canadian authors, the, the biopic authors, the, the LGBT authors, and the different genres and styles. And, uh, you know, you've got um, all of it there by age and everything else. 
and so you lay out the book there where you actually do give the review on it so people you know it's a good idea to go in and and just kind of listen to a review of it it, it gives you an invitation to yes. come in and want to discover more uh, and your own writing is on here as well yes i'm one of a whole team of reviewers it's just been a great great i've missed so much enjoyed being part of that world and involved with it I'm looking for where it says team of reviewers. I'm looking at the site right now. So what it would be under for readers, impressions, book reviews, book recommendation, in conversation for writers. If you go to our team, I think uh, there's a our team and then you should come up with the team of reviewers. Then you'll go to my, you can go to my bio photo, which should be on there. Okay, so I'm looking at our team. So you've got, it's not just you, you've got a bunch of you up there. There's a whole group of us, yeah. Right. And yes. uh, I am trying to find you here. So Where there we you? are, there we are, contributing reviewer, right. There we uh, are. And uh, uh, great. And, you know, of course, you're in Kimberley, BC. BC, and yes. yes. And, <laughs> and all about you is there as well with your art and, my, and everything else. My book reviews are all at the bottom of that page there, so right excellent and your own writing and everything else will be on on your uh capri site the art yes. site capriceartstudio.com excellent and so people can find the writing and everything there as well and uh, yes and, and obviously all the art because you do sell your art you sell it from your studio as well yes you do, do commission art as well so I people do. can commission yes. uh, is it mostly um scenic art that you do for the most part, yes, yes. And I love working with commissioned paintings and really tuning into my clients. And that's where I get one of my biggest thrills. That's mm. The majority of my, my work is through doing commissions. Mm. Nice, nice. Yes. You know, and all of your paintings, the, you know, they're, they're always, I mean, I love that one, the tree, you know, all the different colors on the tree, you know, and it's, it's just that yeah, you're, an artist that it's almost kind of rough and ready, but it, in the rarity of what it is, oh. you know, it shows, it shows uh, almost a vulnerability of that. Something doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Oh, great. I like that interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it, I invite people to come and look at your site and look at the art that you are selling to read what you are writing. And then obviously to look at the site, you know, of the reviews on the books, et cetera. And, and there, of course, if somebody wants to be an art student, they can reach out to you as well through, For sure. through your site. Yes, or? yes, absolutely. There's a whole section on my, my art lessons and lectures. And I'm just gearing up now to launch a whole new art course all done online and that'll be launched this fall so i'm looking forward to that new venue yeah wonderful yeah. you know and our students aren't just young people there are so many people at all stages of life and they you know go i've never drawn anything in my life but i'm drawn to it yeah you know i didn't know how and i want to learn and then they discover something about themselves oh, a voice yes. that's been wanting to come out for so those, long those are yeah. my favorite kind of students the ones mm. that have no experience and yeah then they come in with the students that have experience and they all learn from one another yeah. and oh it's just i'm telling you it's an amazing experience to be with them mm. Yeah. Well, you know, you're lucky. You really, you know, you, you found your orchestra, <laughs> oh. <laughs> all your instruments there. And I'm glad that, you know, that that you have branched out and that you're doing all of these things because they're all a thread onto one another. Um, all about, you know, expression and allowing and discovery. And, you know, that's something we need to encourage more in people is your own I discovery. Agree. Of, I agree. You know, there's a voice in every one of us that's trying to come out and express ourselves in whatever way. So explore whichever way it is, right? Yeah, there's a whole world out there. Yeah. 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 And the whole world in here trying it's to get true. out. So it is true. And maybe it's art that it wants to come out in. Oh, it, art is a whole awesome, awesome thing. Yes, exactly. Yes. Right on. Thank you so much for coming back. We must not leave it so long until the That's next time. Been wonderful to talk with you, Sarah. 
And uh, I really do invite people to go back and listen to her previous show with us as well. It will be on her show page. All you have to go to selfdiscoverymedia.com in the search engine and put Caprice Hogg, which is C-A-P-R-I-C-E-H-O-G-G. -G, and her both of her shows will come up. And um, please do listen to the first one because we do talk about the health challenges growing up and all of the obstacles that are there. But now look where she is now. So when you listen to both of those shows, you go, wow, she's come far. She's very true to who she is. I will repost that past link on my blog so that it'll be easy access for people too. Excellent. And both yeah. of the shows will be each on each other's page as well. So Great. most certainly love what you're doing, love who you are and, and love the way you've branched out and then just spread your own wings. So it's wonderful. And, and I'm glad to know that Sarah. you are nice and healthy now, which is important. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And to everyone out there, there's something inside of you that wants to express itself. And you don't know what that is until you're willing to go and explore a few avenues. It could be art. It could be writing. It could be music. You don't know until you're willing to, to try different experiences. And you will find something inside of you that wants to come out and express itself. And it very well could be art. She's got a whole program signing up for September. I would get in on it as soon as you can. So until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. Please tune in to our selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see all the other genres that we have from you. Every week on Tuesday, we bring you new shows from illuminating people. If you know someone that should be interviewed, please contact us at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com. Now stay tuned for your next show.